Star Music. You pick them up, flip them like a pickup truck. Swing it when it fits the cuss. 50 bucks, serve them like a chicken lunch. Freak a ring and spin, give them bars in a mood. Stubborn mule headed so hard, I couldn't feel a punch. I'm a jaw crack a raw rapper. Lyrics gonna hit him with the force of a train to make a ball backwards. Headbangers, guitar smashers, spot in a bar bash. Quick as a car crash, they star standard. Got a lot of living to give them. My lyrics line them up and rip them wisdom. I give them, flip them to my religion. I got a vision, it's very vivid. I feel it, I will reveal it in time. Refined supernatural spirit. They got nothing on them. Push you off a building, race to the floor so I can catch you before you touch the bottom. Bet your life in my hands. Sold me in a cipher and I rap like I'm trying to fight for my fans, you know? Yeah, come on. Yeah, what's going on with you guys? This is BQ. This is the Impact Lounge B side Impact Wrestling Review. Also kicking things off with a little bit of a discussion topic for you guys. So whatever platform you're listening on, please hit the subscribe button. This is the number one place to be for Impact Wrestling fans. I can promise you that. All right, so let's kick it off with something I've got on my chest, something I've got on my mind lately in regards to Impact. This has been something that's been on my mind for quite some time. And the last few days on social media, I've been seeing posts that just make me finally want to discuss this, bring it to light, and you guys can give me your thoughts as well. So I'm going to throw this question to you guys first. If you were the individual in charge or one of the individuals in charge of the Global Wrestling Network, what kind of content would you like to see on the channel that would, number one, make you want to tune in? Every single day, you're bored, you're sitting around the house, you're bored at work, you're whatever it is, you're in a waiting room somewhere, and you turn on the GWN, what kind of stuff do you want to see on that platform? And number two, what kind of content do you think would bring in new subscribers? So if you're listening to me on YouTube right now, let me know in the comments. Um, If you're listening on another platform, you can always tweet at me, hit me on Facebook, or look up the Impact Lounge on YouTube and leave your thoughts. So I want to know kind of some of the things that are on your guys' mind because later I'm going to do another video with some of the top ideas. This is why I say this. If you follow the Global Wrestling Network Twitter account, the uh, Facebook, and even if you follow the company in general on Instagram, there's one thing that remains very, very constant with this company, and it's that they continue to rely on the old TNA library. Now, when you hear Don Callis in these interviews and some of these guys, you know, we're not TNA anymore. We're Impact Wrestling. Yet every single day, they continue to remind you about TNA and that we were TNA. And nine times out of nine, these video clips or these images are reminding us of a time where the company, I mean, you look at the crowd, there's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people in the crowd on a regular basis. And, and it actually can be kind of depressing. And... A lot of the focus of the GWN continues to be that old TNA library. And and if you get on Instagram and you see the throwback picture of the day, they did it yesterday and they did it today too. It's AJ Styles doing something. It's AJ, it's Angle, it's Joe, it's Sting. They just continue to rely on these people who, frankly, many of them, most of them, don't want anything to do with the company anymore. Now, this is a new management, it's a new regime, and I would imagine if you put, you know, some of these guys in the same room with the current group at Impact, I'm sure some of these relationships could be mended, but they continue to just focus on these guys. They're telling us we're Impact Wrestling now, and it keeps going back to TNA. Here's my thing with the Global Wrestling Network. I would like to see them focus on some original content. Now, I understand there's budget issues. I understand you can't you know, send Mackenzie Mitchell to someone's hometown and they walk around and they talk. I, I I get that. You can't take it to that extreme. But sometimes me, and I think probably some of you too, sometimes I, I don't want to watch wrestling. Like I want to be involved with what Impact's got going on. But there's days like I don't want to watch wrestling. I moved I moved away from watching a lot of other companies because it was just too much. You know, and, and for me, Impact is a really, really good balance of everything I like about wrestling. So that's what I watch and that's what I follow. And that's what I've been following strictly for a couple of years. But I, w- I just would like to see what the Global Wrestling Network. So let me put it like this. When I used to have the WWE Network years ago, there's a couple shows I really liked on there. Um, Unfiltered with Renee Young. And I don't even like Renee Young, but I liked that. I like the uh, candid interviews like that. And then I liked uh, Table of Three. 
So those are the shows I used to like really, really enjoy on there. And it doesn't require something, you know, crazy budget wise. But it's just it's just something different that's not in ring related. And the GWN is very much like here's wrestling, 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 wrestling. I don't want them to pull back the curtain too much. But, you know, take in uh, around the ring with Josh Matthews, you know, you can do another interview show very similar to that. But keep Josh Matthews away. Every time something's going on in GWN and Twitch and whatever, it's Josh Matthews, Josh Matthews. I may like Josh. You may like Josh. A lot of people don't like Josh. You've got someone in the company, gorgeous, who's learning day by day and getting better and better in Mackenzie Mitchell. You even got freaking Alicia doing stuff with the uh, the Twitch shows and everything when they're up in Canada. Like You've got some individuals at your disposal that could probably do something a little bit different from an interview standpoint. But I really think they're making a mistake continuing to fall back on the in-ring action on a regular basis. And I think they're making an even bigger mistake continuing to focus on AJ Styles and these guys. I don't need to see GWN subscription numbers to know that this strategy does not work. There is no way this strategy is working for them and giving them the desired growth result that they want every month. There's, there's no way in hell. Now, working with WWE... And, you know, where they're licensing footage and then that kind of leads to, you know, check the Global Wrestling Network for more AJ and Angle. Okay, I get that. But continuing to push this stuff, you're not bringing the old fans back. Uh, And this is going to be another topic for another day. Who is Impact's target audience? But you're not bringing the old fans back by focusing on that stuff. So focus on who you have. Even the graphics for the Global Wrestling Network, like, Focus on who you have right now. Now, a lot of people are going to say, okay, well, Ring of Honor does the same thing. They got, they're pushing this Daniel Bryan stuff and all that. And I get that. I agree with you. I'm the first person to say that that is 100% true. But Ring of Honor doesn't have the perception that they are relying on former WWE stars to make their ship sail. You see what I'm saying? So if you want to move forward and you want to be Impact Wrestling and you're saying, hey, don't focus on who left, focus on who's coming aboard, then you focus on who's coming aboard. Let us get to know Brian Cage, Tessa Blanchard, Pentagon on the GWN, on Sue Young. Find some Sue Young matches from Shine, from wherever the hell else. I don't know if she's wrestled in Shimmer. And put together, like, a if, if you want to focus on in-ring, put together... Oh, you know, some of Sue Young's greatest matches. So you can get to know Sue Young in the ring. So you can get to know Tessa Blanchard in the ring. But they they have got to find a creative way to create some new original content and market around that and promote that stuff. Because, you know, I keep repeating myself. There's no way in hell that this posting about Angle and AJ every day is working. And now they added Jeff Jarrett to the mix, too, because Jeff Jarrett was inducted in the Hall of Fame. They weren't posting nothing about Jeff Jarrett. Until he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, here's the latest Jeff Jarrett. Like, no, come on, guys. So I want to know if you guys, you know, if you guys got something on your mind, what would you like to see on a global wrestling network that would lock you in every day, make you log on every day? Because I only I only watch it for Explosion and the one-night only shows. So give me another reason to get on. I love that they're doing the Twitch thing. That's more of like the 24-7 content. So when you feel like, Watching some old TNA, you go to Twitch. But give us a reason to really care about the Global Wrestling Network. Let's wrap up Impact real quick. I'm going to do things a little bit different this time around. The B-side is basically becoming a bi-weekly thing for me. I would love for it to be a weekly show. And hopefully it will be soon. I was going to review Under Pressure last week. But I'm not going to lie to you. The worst, the first match between Scott Steiner and Eli Drake. I thought was one of the worst matches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Maybe that's being a little dramatic, but it's one of the worst matches I've seen in recent history. And it took me out of it for the rest of the show. The crowd was so horrible through the whole thing as well. I couldn't get into the show like a lot of you guys are able to. So in uh, respect to that, because my previous couple reviews were a little negative. And what's what you know, what's the point of the uh, what's the mission of the Impact Lounge? You know, to bring you positive content, positive reviews about Impact. There were a couple episodes that I didn't like and. I wasn't in love with Under Pressure just because that opening match took me out of it. So you can only imagine someone in the Impact Zone, you know, watching that crap. 
And I'm sorry to call it crap. Eli Drake deserves a lot better than that. The match was um, had had a very lazy finish, and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like a single second of it. The rest of the show, with that being said, was pretty good, but I chose not to review it. This week's episode, on the other hand, I actually liked quite a bit. I'm going to do things a little different this time around. I'm actually going to start off with the main event. I don't know what you guys thought about the main event, but I'm talking about Eddie and Sammy in the woods. I absolutely loved it. It caught my attention. And they were able to take this storyline, which, as I've said before, I thought when they went to the House of Hardcore match, they took a step backwards. I didn't. I think they need to stay out of the ring. And this is something I always feel like with storylines in general. You grow your storylines the best outside of the ring. Now, there's a double-edged sword to that. Because us at home are saying, okay, you know, we're seeing the growth of this storyline. The people in the impact zone have no clue what's going on. So there's a double-edged sword with that. But I like to keep the, the action in the ring and the, and the growth of the storylines outside of the ring. You can tell a much better creative story in that sense. As far as the match in the effing woods, I was a big fan of the uh, F-bombs that were dropped because that's how we talk. I've said this before as well, that my humble opinion is that the reason baby faces don't connect, the white bread baby faces don't connect with the fans now. It's because they speak in a way that we do not speak in real life. So now we, we're relating to the heels because, you know, especially in this generation where there's a lot of bullying and there's a lot of fighting online. Like we have more edge to us than, let's say, in the 90s. Now, there was a video that I had done a few months ago and I never uploaded it. It was it was either eight or nine stars in 2018 that Impact needs to give uh, to change them creatively. Whether it's, you know, to change their um, their gimmick, their persona, their ring gear or something. So I highlighted a bunch of a bunch of stars. Two of them that I mentioned um, are ones that we are seeing some growth with. So, you know, I had actually thrown Braxton Sutter on there and that was before his heel turn. I threw Alberto El Patron on there because I said, you know, where is he a heel? Is he a baby face? I actually threw Eli Drake on there. I threw Rosemary on there, believe it or not. And uh, if you were to hear my hear the upload, you would understand where I was going with it regarding them. But there's two guys who um, I talked about. One was Matt Seidel, and we're going to talk about him later. The other was Eddie Edwards. Those were two of the ones where I was like, these guys need something else. Because they are just boring the way that they are. I didn't think they were going to be able to do it with Eddie. I really didn't. And sure as hell they have. I thought this match was awesome. What I would do with this feud in the long run, I actually would have Sammy Callahan win the feud so that Eddie can snap even further and have, an, have even more character development. Because if Eddie wins, like Eddie's already beat the dude up, he's already beat him in a match, like what what left, what happens if he beats him again? He's not satisfied. So I feel like to actually have Sammy win this thing and take Eddie out of commission for a little while. Even move on to the world title picture. A lot of people have been asking, is Chris Jarrell going to gonna do with any do anything with Impact? There's only two people on the Impact roster that Jericho could work with that's going to generate any interest. And it's Austin Aries and Sammy Callahan. So if Sammy Callahan, whatever they're going to do at Slammiversary, if he can win this thing, now you can pitch something to Jericho and you can do something with Jericho that's going to be really, really big. But if Sammy loses... You can't put the two of them against each other. And there's already a natural storyline you know, going on with those guys a little bit as well. I would actually have Eddie almost break down and give in to join OVE. Only for Sammy to turn on him once again. Not, or not once again, but for Sammy to turn on him. So in normal scenarios, Eddie would join them as a way of getting in and then you know, turn his back on him. I would do it different. To where Sammy just continues to get the upper hand on this guy. Because the more he gets the upper hand, the more growth we're going to see out of Eddie Edwards. I'm curious to see what Alicia's role and Tommy Dreamer's role is going to be in all this. I have, I'm very high on Alicia Edwards. I actually think if they are able to snap her, put her in a heel role as this little petite um, evil girl. They can actually you know, have their own version of Alexa Bliss a little bit. Um, 
I know that's that's a she's doing really good things over there, so that's you know maybe not a great comparison, but I think Alicia could actually accomplish more in a heel role. But I absolutely loved the whole thing. Opening match was Z and E versus Drago and Aerostar. Another random title match. I'd still like to see Andrew Everett and DJ Z's gear coming to the ring match a little bit more. This was a new match with a lot of new moves, a lot of new spots, very innovative. But the crowd was so out of it. They gave these guys nothing. Can't wait for them to get to Canada. And so these guys can get the, you know, the respect they deserve in the ring. I can understand being tired, but I can't understand clapping or at least, oh, you know, I mean, if you see something cool, your mouth should move. Thought, for me, this was one of the best tag matches they put on in a little while. Really enjoyed it. How do you think the tag division is shaping out? I think it's, you know, they're doing a fairly good job considering a couple months ago they had two tag teams. Now they're doing pretty good. And this is, you know, without the Desi Hit squad. So I, I like where they're going with the tag division. What do you think? I'm no longer as engaged in this random um, attacker segment. Because I don't like the inclusion of Petey Williams and Sanjay. I think that takes, you know, it takes the intrigue out of it a little bit because those guys think of them as a, from a creative standpoint on impact. Like they're just two guys who wrestle. There's no like gimmick to them or anything. So as guys who just portrayed as in-ring characters on TV, what, what the hell, what do they, what do they have to do with this? I'm going to give you my opinion on the random attacker. I have no idea who it is, first of all. If I had to take a guess, people ask me all the time, who do you think it is? I think it's Teddy Hart. I think this is leading towards a new Team Canada. So maybe I'm fantasy booking my ass off there. But those are my personal thoughts because I think that the um, the targets are pink. They might They might look red on TV, but I think they're actually pink. Or I could be totally wrong on that. I actually haven't paid too much attention, but... I think they're going a new Team Canada route, um, and I think t uh, Teddy Hart's going to be a part of this thing, and that's how they're going to include Petey Williams. I think they're going to actually attack Petey Williams, too, at some point, but that's what I think. But I've lost a little bit of interest with the inclusion of, of him and Sanjay, Petey and Sanjay, at this point, because I don't, you know, they don't offer enough for me creatively. I had no interest in Tommy Dreamer versus RVD for the GWN thing. You guys know how I feel about those segments. I just did a whole opening on focusing on the old TNA stuff. Don't think it works. I understand Tommy Dreamer's part of the show right now, so they find a way to, you know, include him into it. But I last thing I want to see is RVD's TNA run. The LAX stuff just got a lot more interesting. Obviously, you can't have a giant stable and build it around two guys. So, you, you know, you have to feel like, okay, this is all going somewhere. You can't have a stable of, like, six or seven people and then just the one tag team wrestles and everyone else is standing around. Diamante returns. Love that she's finally back. This makes things more intriguing because at first you just think, oh, well, King is just the new leader, whatever. Now it's like, okay, wait, his his uh, intentions are, she's questioning his intentions. So that means there's going to be another fold in this. People can disimpact all they want, but what they're doing with LAX, um, Eddie and Sammy, Sue Young and that whole thing, nobody's touching that right now on another program. I know that they're not. There's no way that, there's no way you can be. You talk shit about impact, but then you, what you're watching doesn't even match what they're doing creatively with that. You know, and as I said earlier, Rosemary was a character that I wanted to see some creative growth with her in 2018. And some people say, well, you're crazy to think that. Well, I thought she was getting a little soft. And with the whole burial with Sue, Run Sue Young, like, you know, she's coming back a new character. You know, Allie's coming back a new character. You have a pretty good feeling that Eddie is coming back a new character. So they're keeping things really, really fresh. You turn on another program and, and people are wearing the same gear and they're doing the same gimmicks and the same stuff. You know, Impact is, is keeping it fresh and they're they're keeping it moving. I really like that. LAX finally got their win uh, against Cult of Lee. I love to see Cult of Lee get a few wins. And one thing I noticed once again is that the Impact Zone crowd has no idea why King is out there. None whatsoever. And that's what I said. It's a double-edged sword. You build backstage with the storylines, but then the crowd has no idea what's going on. Ro always mentions that the LAX stable can get, you know, kind of stale from time to time because they do so much so fast. But this is shaping up to be really good. Fact of Life was okay. I'm not, I'm not really buying into Eli right now because 
I don't know if he's going to be there long term. So I kind of, you know, I kind of tend to tune out on those guys a little bit. So hopefully Eli Drake is back and I can start enjoying him again. But um, even though, they, you know, there were some funny moments with this, I wasn't really in love with uh, the whole fact of life thing. Brings Moose into the picture. And um, I guess the wrestlers make their own matches now. And I would understand if Eli Drake challenged him. But right after that, Josh was basically made it official <laughs> next week is a number one contenders match. So I have to believe Moose uh, moves on. I don't think Moose is ready for the world title, but I think he's ready to be in the picture. I just don't think he's ready to be the champion. I would really like to see him have a mouthpiece like in ring of honor when he had Stokey Hathaway and uh, Veda Scott. I mean, come on guys, Brian Cage and Rohi Raju. I really think impact needs to start finding some enhancement talent because right now, they're using Rohi Raju as enhancement talent, and he's losing all the time. And he's supposed to be the main guy for the Desi Hit Squad. You know, Gama Singh is the leader, but he's the main in-ring competitor. But he's always losing all the time, so maybe that's a way that they introduce the Hit Squad. I don't personally think so. I think they're just going to show up as a tag team um, rather than doing something creatively built around uh, Rohi losing so much. The positive side, though, is that about this is that it shows you impact roster for the most part is full of guys who are pretty much on equal playing fields. So they all matter. This was some of the magic with global force wrestling is that I'm not talking about the impact version. I'm talking about the original version. Everyone was on this real level playing field. So when you put the guys in each other, so when you put guys against each other in matches, you never knew who was going to win. And that's something I think impact is kind of creating right now when they put their, you know, one on one, two on two matchups, matchups together, whatever. I don't think that you know who's going to win. You know, they don't really have jobbers per se. Like when, you know, months ago, when um, even though I, I like him a lot, you know, say when they had Marche Rocket out there, like you just knew he was going to lose when he was out there. And they, they don't, they don't do that so much now. You don't even have that in the knockouts really. But Brian Cage runs through him. Matt Seidel comes out. I thought he was really entertaining. Adam had said on the Impact Review that he likes Matt Seidel's music. I hate Matt Seidel's music. But he was really entertaining after the match. And as I said earlier, he was one of the guys in 2018 I wanted to see some growth with. And I get a real kick out of his open your third eye and, and all that. Like, get an absolute kick out of it. He's become a very interesting character, in my opinion. I have to believe Brian Cage is going to win that X Division title, though. Josh Matthews and Austin Aries Skype session didn't do a whole lot for me because they didn't even have a good connection. Like, it's for a tape television, guys. Start over. Like, I mean, what the hell? I think Austin made some good points about both Eli Drake and Moose. However, Moose is so uninteresting, uninteresting, and I think he's going to be the guy in the main event. So, um, I don't know how. I don't know how much I care. I was watching UFC the other night, the uh, the card that Punk was on, and it was a badass card. I hope you guys got a chance to see it. Lots of really good fights. And one thing I noticed with the UFC is they know how to create a big fight feel for their main events. And this is something that uh, Impact has not been able to do. Maybe because they lack the star power. But like UFC and wrestling are so different in the sense that so when you got the lighter weight guys and UFC, the matches aren't as good. You know, they're a lot more calculated, the strikes and everything. They're kind of going for submissions. It usually goes to a decision. And then you got the, the heavyweights, like the main event the other night uh, with Romero and the other dude forgot his name at the moment. They're out there just beating the crap out of each other. And then in wrestling, you've got, you know, the lightweight guys really being the workhorses and doing all the amazing things. And then you get to the main event and the matches are slow and they're boring. I think they have to find a way to make the main main event matches faster and more hard hitting. And they have to create that big fight feel how they can do that. I, I don't totally know, but they just, I think it's up to the agents to put these matches together where people are more into them. Cause even like with the weekly episodes of impact, by the time it gets to the main event, the crowd barely cares anymore. You know, that match with moose and Congo Kong a couple weeks ago, like they were out there wrestling the crickets. So they got to do something. They have to figure out a way to build from, you know, the very beginning of the show throughout the show. You you see it in, in boxing. You see it in UFC. They got to find a way to do it with impact. 
I did like moose dropping an F bomb because like I said, this is how people talk and this is how you connect with people. So I'm big on that. That's all I've got for this week for the B side. Again, um, let me know what you guys think about the global force or I'm sorry, <laughs> the global wrestling network and what you would like to see different and added. Uh, so we can discuss this. Eventually I'm going to try to put together 10, 15 ideas in video format and, uh, hopefully get it to who I need to get it to and see if we can uh, make, you know, do our part to make some change in this whole process. Thanks for listening guys. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.